You're listening to another episode of Battles with Bits of Rubber, starring Stuart Bray and Todd Debrasini. <laughs> So the homeschooling going well? Yeah, not so bad. I mean, it's a drain because the kids are home, right? So they don't want to work. <laughs> Their brains are telling them no. that it's it's vacation time. So, um, so, so trying to be to get them motivated enough to do anything substantial for any length of time is very difficult. They won't do six hour days. You know, what I mean, it's really hard. So, you know, you- I don't like doing six hour days either. <laughs> <laughs> over a six hour day but I get really excited about the, what they've got to do I look at their projects and I'm like oh this could be really cool and they're like just shoot me the side eye like no <laughs> so, uh, but, do it for us dad yeah so it, it's hard trying to uh, to get everyone to do the things that they need to do but what can you do but uh, we're getting there we're doing a bit every day and uh, I'm working on it but uh, yeah trying to do some things uh, we uh, went out for a bike ride because we live out in the middle of nowhere in the sticks. So, like, we can go for rides and stuff, and you won't see another human being. So, nice. It's uh, it's nice to have that space for things around us. But uh, we had a we took the kids' bikes out one day, and then the next morning, um, I noticed it was flat, like dead flat. So we had a puncture, and uh, so I went to my uh, bicycle repair kit, and I found my my tube of uh, adhesive that's in the in the you know the repair kit, and I haven't used it for about yeah. five years because I bought on my bike, I bought you know the puncture proof tires so i haven't needed this thing for years so so i get it out and it's completely dried up the tube is solid there's nothing nothing doing in there i'm like oh crap so i gotta buy one of course all the shops that sell them are are shut because nothing that's not essential stores is closed so the bike shop's not open so i I look up on amazon and i can get it but even on prime it's going to be like a month before it it turned up so i'm like oh crap what am i going to do so i thought why don't i try and see if if telesis would work (laughs) so i go into my makeup (laughs) kit i pull out the telesis eight and i use it on the patch in the and the the rubber you know the inner tube and 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 it's been over a day and it's still good so how about that (laughs) There you go. All right. Well, I guess and if you figure out, use. yeah, well, I, I guess if you figure out how much you pay, you know, for the vulcanizing adhesive, you know, contact adhesive for the for the rubber patches compared to what we pay for the makeup, it should bloody work. <laughs> but uh, that's a new one. I've never <laughs> I've never fixed a bike with my makeup kit before. So there we go. It was quite cool. Right, I'm drinking well, water. Mm. Well, wonders never cease. There we go. Um, so that was cool. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, we got a YouTube channel now. You set up our YouTube channel, so people should go check that out. If you go yeah. to YouTube and just you know look up uh, Battles with Bits of Rubber, you'll find us. Our two grinning faces staring back at you like insanity. And it's stereo. been populated already. Yeah, it's got some nice subscribing <laughs> action going on, which is cool. And I put some videos up. Um, we did some... Uh, well, I did some video... Well, well basically, on I had a, a whole bunch of questions about... Um, uh, you know, cheap airbrushes. So I just bought three cheap airbrushes and, and reviewed them and showed how they work and, you know, whether one's better than the other and all that kind of stuff. So head on over to the, our YouTube channel and check that out. And they'd be good in conjunction with the, the three-part article we're doing for Prosthetics Magazine on airbrushes. <laughs> yeah, the, the two-part that grew. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, the twins became yeah. triplets. The oh, long- but I think it's going to be worth it. I think it's going to be really good. I think so too. It's getting a bit blocky, so I'm going to turn the video off because I think basically the entire world is online. So um, yeah, sounds sounds good. I think I'm going to do the same. Hang on, see how that goes. I'm just staring at a box of moving Lego. Otherwise, um, it's better. It seems a little better. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now I just have a a still image of your smiling face. And I got a image of you looking at me quite sternly. <laughs> As I show. So, absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's very cool. So the other thing I've been doing is I've been trying to get my head around ZBrush again because it's been a while since I've used it and I was inspired by your Abbey Chase sculpt, which looked pretty cool. So we should put which, some pictures of that up. Thanks. It, 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 it turned out pretty well. I'm actually – can you hear the printer in the background? I'm, yes. I'm printing a 20-centimeter – 20 centimeter high uh, bust of her that it's been going since yesterday afternoon and it's still got a 
another third of it to do. Oh wow, it's all looking good. I think so. Yeah, it's it's. I got a lot of support material on it, so it looks like Westminster Cathedral with repair scaffolding all around it. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see Abby behind all the the support material, but I think She's it's going to turn out pretty well. It looks the resolution seems seems good. Cool. And is this in your Lulz bot? Yep, it's on Fantastic. the Taz Six. Excellent stuff. Oh, nice one. Oh, that's cool. I've got to start using my printer again. I haven't been doing any 3D stuff at all for a while because I was on that show, and then now that's all stopped, like everything. So (laughs) it's going to come around again. I've pretty much become obsessed with ZBrush. Oh, that's good. I've still got some real hurdles to get through with that. I I spent uh, half a day sculpting. I just sent you a bunch of brushes. Yes, I saw you. I'll have to figure out how I add those on. Um because well, what you do is you got to go into your programs programs folder, uh, open up your Pixelogic folder, yep. find um, the Z brushes, and then just drop those in there. Oh, okay, fantastic. Thank you. I'll do that then. Yeah, yeah. Because I updated to um, this is the beauty. I mean, I think it's really good, and I hope they don't stop doing it. But yeah, you know, if you pay for Z brush, you get the free updates, which is amazing. Um, so I've got my uh, my my update for the. 20 ZBrush 20 or 2020 or it's called the latest one uh, yeah. so that's cool although it'll have bells and whistle features that I won't get to anytime soon but <laughs> but uh, I'm having fun oh, I'm, I'm I'm struggling with just just the basic basic stuff I still I'm making notes and I think oh I've got this down and I'll work on something and I'll go oh how the fuck do you do that again yeah well, it's not a bad thing to to be floundering around a bit in it. There's um, a, a good mate of mine, a guy called Simon Weber, who uh, probably over ten years ago now made the shift pretty much to completely to digital, and and does a lot of big ZBrush stuff, and he's been doing it for a while, and he's really really good. And one of the things he said that really stood out for me a while ago was that, that I think a lot of people don't do it because they could, but they're not prepared to suck a long time they're not prepared to go through that pain of being really shit at something having spent a long time well, being competent I, i've got that part down <laughs> oh i can be shit don't you worry about that no but he's like you know nobody wants yeah, to go no, through I, with that you know so you do it a that's bit that's not a problem yeah you know you do it for a bit and then it feels awful and i had this yesterday and you're like do you know what i'm just gonna do it in clay and it's like no this is the problem you've got to work through it and it, it's it's a good thing, I yeah. think, to be reminded of that feeling because that's exactly, you know, how a lot of people feel when they pick up a sculpting tool. So I don't I don't I don't think it's uh, it's bad to feel that way because that's what it feels like when you're not good at something, you know. And you need to that there's you know it can be done because you keep seeing pictures on Zebra Central of amazing work, and then you kind of go, but how how I'm do- it's just not doing the things I wanted to do, and it's obviously you know a deficit in my ability. So. I thought I'd try to to um, clean up and do some re-sculpting on a on a scan of an actual physical sculpture I had done mm. a while back uh, when I was teaching a sculpture class at the Art Institute. Of uh, it's it's maybe a seven or eight inch uh, pan bust, you know, with horns and his great facial expression, and I just the the more I tried to make it work, the more fucked up it got. <laughs> so, you know, I think it might be easier to just start that from scratch rather than try to clean it up. Yeah, maybe because it it just just was not working. Yeah. Oh well, the uh, yeah, I think I think maybe that's the thing. You know, and that when when it becomes easier to do some things in, uh, you know, ZBrush, then that's when it gets very interesting because I I like the idea of. Of, of blocking out shapes and getting the accuracy and then being able to scale it and then you could print it out and then work over the surface with clay or do you know what I mean and actually kind of yeah. do that finishing mm-hmm. touch or maybe even not maybe just print them all direct but it's exciting I've got because um, you know we're on extended leave aren't we generally as a as, in it, as a planet um, I was, yeah. was digging out through the loft some of my um, boxes of books that I never went through when we moved house Um and uh, I found that what I was looking for, which was uh, there was a there was a horror comic when I was a kid called Scream, it came out in 1984, I think, um, and it was uh, it was basically only ran for 15 editions. It came out once a week, 
Um, and it was a horror comic, and it had these really cool stories in there. Anyway, to cut a long story short, uh, it, it, it stopped after 15 weeks because there were various... It was to do with the printing union, I think. They, they moved all the printing from where it was to Wapping, and it meant that a lot of printers were going to get out of work. So there was a whole sort of industrial action, and a lot of newspapers and magazines mm. fell foul of that because, obviously, without the means to publish, they couldn't produce papers. Anyway, so th- this kind of went down as a result and i was really sad anyway that's I'm, too bad I, I i i still have my first edition and there's a picture of me somewhere i've got to find it of me wearing the free fangs that came with this this comic um <laughs> i was 11 10 11 years old and uh it's really good and they were really creepy they weren't like your kids stories at all they're really vicious like there's one called monster where uh, this guy basically um He's, he lives alone with his dad, and his dad ends up getting killed by this creature upstairs, and it turns out it's his his uncle that's deformed, hunchback, and has been kept up in the, in the cellar, or in the loft this whole time. And now no, nobody alive is in the house, so this 12-year-old kid's got to take care of him. And someone comes around the house trying to get money because his dad owed money before he got killed, and then attacks the kid, and then... Terry, his uncle, his deformed uncle, comes down, kills this bloke. He's like, "Oh shit!" Now we've got to bury the body and go on the run. And it's just like fucking. It's really dark, but it's amazing. And the draw, the art was amazing. And it, this was a British comic, and very few people cool. have seen it. But I've got them all. I managed to track them down uh, a complete set. And also, I managed to find uh, a zip file online of all the comics, um, so you can w- look at them on an iPad. I'll send them to you. Um, they're fucking. Oh, that'd be amazing. great. Amazing. But there's some really creepy creepy characters in it and i wanted to do so i started sculpting this uh this this character called terry i'll, I'll have to put a picture of it up in my effort so far it's fucking appalling because the thing is um it's i really wanted to do it justice so it probably wasn't the right thing for me to do first because <laughs> i don't know the software well <laughs> enough to be able to do it justice um uh and it, it's such a cool character it's so so vivid and you know um it's lovely you know so anyway so i'm gonna Oh, no pain, and, no gain. Oh, well, exactly. But it just puts us right back in touch with that feeling of like, shit, I, I know I want to do this stuff. I'm driven. I can feel the energy behind me, but I just don't have the ability to, to, to do the thing with the tools I've got. I just don't know how to do it. And it's, it's weathering that sensation during the process you know, that is required to yeah. get good enough to do it. And uh, I think it's quite refreshing. It's not nice. It's not a nice feeling at all. But it's quite nice to just kind of snap out of it and go, you know, just come back to it. So, uh, and I, especially when you think you know what you're doing, you're using the right brushes, and and it's well, it worked before. Why isn't it working now? Yeah, no, it's a weird one. And I think the thing is to is to make it work for you. Do you know what I mean? It's still about sculpture. That's what I like about ZBrush. Is it is about sculpture. It's 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 not. Yeah. It, you know, you come at it from a sculptural point of view. So all those sculptural sensibilities still work it's just you have to learn about you know how a, how a computer handles geometry because that's just a necessary evil um, so never mind right it's it's, it's 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 the taxes you have to do because you earn money do you know what i mean well it did until this happened mm-hmm. so who knows um uh so i guess uh oh and the other thing i've been using which i may is have fun. to turn to prostitution <laughs> <laughs> then i'll be broke for sure <laughs> I have to turn the basement into a boudoir. Uh, I do look good in a dress. Okay. Well, I'll have to take your word for it. <laughs> Although you're, you're you're growing the hermit beard at the moment, which is fun. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, well if, if I have to live like a hermit, I might as well look like one. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so that leads me on to, uh, uh, I was doing some doodling, and um, I don't have um, an iPad, because I looked into this about a year ago on Dracula. I was thinking I really wanted to get a nice tablet for drawing. And so I was looking at all these different tablets. Yeah. And I was looking at the iPad, the iPad Pro that I wanted, that had the pen That's, as well. that's the one I have. Yeah, it's about a £1,000, which for yeah, something... It's not cheap, but it's, but it's, but it's worth it, and it's the, the resolution, screen resolution is gorgeous. Yeah, well, it's good, but it's just like, it, the, the trouble I had with it was, for that much money, and it's not a laptop. I was like, Christ. So, I mean, my laptop, which is a gaming laptop, was about 700 quid. Do you know what I mean? And it's a very high yeah, Samsung. Yeah. I can't remember what. A Samsung thingy. Note 8, whatever. I don't know what it is. But it, it's pretty big. You know, it's like a... Oh. I think it's a... I think it's an 8-inch screen or a 9-inch screen. But it's, it's, it has a... You know, the pen. It comes with the pen. 
and yeah. it has a drawing app. I'm using Infinite Painter, and I kept thinking, oh, you know, it's a, it, it's it's not as good as Procreate, but is it worth another six hundred? Because I think I paid about four hundred pounds for this lap, for this uh, tablet. Uh, and I think I may have paid for the software, but it was only like a fiver or something. It's not much. Um, but it's really good. And I, I, I was playing with it again today. And it's actually pretty fucking good. And I remember a year ago when I was doing the research and I tried them both. I would go into all the stores and I would draw on both. And honestly, you know, the, the iPad definitely does feel nicer. And there's a little, you know, much less um, lag in the way, you know, the pen responds. But, um right. Right, I got yeah. the keyboard well, along with see, mine, so it so it has oh, it cool. has become I mean, a, my laptop. I did buy that's a little Bluetooth keyboard for this tablet, but I haven't used it that much because often if I'm doing a lot of writing, I'll just you know take my laptop. So, but it is literally mainly the reason I wanted this um, iPad, iPad. This tablet was for, for drawing because it it means I've got all this stuff that I could draw with me in one thing. I don't have to bring my pens and stuff. Although I have had, I've developed a bit of a habit. Uh, of, of buying beautiful uh, alcohol ink pens, you know those. I can't remember the names of them, but you know those kind of like big ch- the, the chisel tip markers with yeah. like, pale greys and stuff. That those are good fun. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm very happy about the tablet. But anyway, I hadn't been using it for a while, and I just charged it up and started drawing on it today, and it's fucking lovely. And it's just, it's really, really nice to be able to draw like paper. You know, it has that kind of filtered thing you put on so it feels like paper it's not slidey glass it's like nice. see-through but it has that kind of texture but it's really nice and it looks just like pens pencils water charcoal chalk whatever you you know want to be using but it's not an ipad and i'm really really pleased with it um you know it renews my faith in my purchase is my point well pro- learning procreates learning procreates my next yeah. challenge I think what's nice about having it on a tablet is it's just something you can pick up and, and play with. It's not an event to get it set up. Because when I, when I was sculpting yesterday, I bought a Cintiq yeah. 16, which is, you know, it's about the size of a laptop. It's not one of the really expensive ones because the big Cintiqs are about £3,000. Um, uh, I, I couldn't stretch that. But this one was about 500 I think. And it's good. It is really good. But this, you know, it's quite an event. Yeah. You've got, you need the laptop and the Cintiq. You know, you take up a big chunk of space on the bench with this. But with a tablet, you know, you can be in bed. You just pull this thing out, and it's, you know, you can just start doodling. It's brilliant. So, um, I'm a big fan of something you can use. I've got a small Wacom tablet for my that I use with my with my desktop computer because I, I don't like the I don't like the really big ones. Um, I, I like being if my hand doesn't yes. have to go. A, a huge distance. Um, I I prefer that better than having to draw. You know. I agree. Across. I agree. I'm finding that out. Yeah, I'm finding that out. It's just like you know. I've got. Um, I bought a bamboo. Is it a tablet? I think uh, from Wacom, and it's about I don't know eight by ten. You know, piece of paper and. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I, yeah, yeah, that's, that's nice. That's about the, that's about the size of mine. Doesn't take up a whole bunch Six of space. Nine, and I've seen something, those massive like tablets. That. Um, and and then they're great and everything. They are good, but but, but it's just like the idea of, oh, I've just got ten minutes. I could doodle something. You know what I mean? You don't have to fire something up and, you know, plug something in and plug it into a USB and a, right. an HDMI port. And it's a it's a, you need something that's a permanent setup for that, really, which is fine. But that's not very spontane- spontaneous. So I like yeah. I like the fact the tablet you can just grab your iPad or whatever and just start doodling for ten minutes and actually get quite a lot done. Oh, and my desk has too much shit on it anyway. Yeah, yeah. and it, But but also, I don't know if you're like me, but you might find when you're at the desk, it's not necessarily when you're feeling creative. You might suddenly get inspired right. first thing in the morning or last thing at night. If you can just grab your tablet and just start drawing. You know what I mean? You might Even if it's just a quick sketch, it might be something that later on when you've got a bit more time, you know, oh, I can spend more time on it. But you captured it in that moment because it was all there. And um, I love it. I do. I've been thinking about putting a drop-down uh, writing desk in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and release release uh, an album of pictures called Shitty Sketches. Or something like that. <laughs> and I seem to spend a a lot of time in there. Well, I guess if uh, if you if you if you're feeling inspired anyway. then then uh, I guess that's uh, something to do. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a feeling just comes over me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> anyway, 
Anyway, uh, so as we were talking about education, I think that leads us quite nicely into your chat uh, for this episode with Brandon and Jackie uh, talking about, um, about uh, learning we... and the nature of learning, or not, <laughs> as the case may be. I love them so much. So how do you know them? They, how... are, they are wonderful. How do you, how Because I've met Brandon. Uh, Brandon was a... Yeah, you have met Brandon. Um, he was a student of mine at the Art Institute. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a former Marine. He was a Marine MP at uh, out at uh, 29 Palms in the California desert. It's just a, a lovely garden spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he was going through some going through some shit, uh, readjusting to civilian life, and we just became fast friends and. Now we spend a lot of time together whenever whenever we can though you know now it's text messaging since we're we're on uh, under house arrest mm-hmm. uh, but his wife uh, Jackie is a is a high school ceramics teacher and she is a master ceramicist um, she is so good uh, and we you know Brandon and I have discussions about education and and other other things frequently um he's pretty damn sharp so you know education's stuff that we've that we've talked about quite a bit and when we decided to do uh you know well you and i talk about education all the time um Mm -hmm. but when you did the interview with with neil that you know let's let's get another perspective in here so jackie Mm -hmm. and brandon came over and you know i kind of gave them the gist of what your conversation with neil had been and we just started talking about stuff and you'll get to hear it now fantastic i mean what i like about it is 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 like you say that they're both accomplished people who are themselves pursuing you know their own journey they want to get better in what they are and they're interested in things and they're still actively pursuing that yeah but also they are yeah. they are like like with Brandon you know obviously going through the whole marine training and everything that brings stuff out of you that a lot of people don't need to dig that deep to find and so i think you know when he i remember right, him, we, it gives you it gives you a perspective that um most most kids coming into college don't have that level of of discipline yeah to take a task from beginning to end yeah yeah and there's nothing mysterious and about Jackie it is very motivated effort. yeah it's it's that's really all it is and um jackie has started a, a makeup uh effects program at at the high school where she teaches a uh, range view high school here in aurora and um they're planning on having me help them build a foam latex oven in the not too distant future once things get together and they'll be the only as far as i know high school in the states that is running foam latex wow that's great as part of the program and they'll they'll be able to set the oven out with uh with the kilns that are on the on a on a covered covered deck so ventilation won't be a problem it's fantastic and she's real stoked uh, to to make this make this all happen she's she's got some some dedicated students who are really into it and they've been doing um some um first responder disaster training in conjunction with uh, the police department and the fire department and drinking and driving, <clears throat> which they did last year, that they did some really, really terrific simulations. Amazing. Anyway, I, I'll stop waffling on and, and you can listen to, to Brandon and Jackie uh, shit some wisdom out. <laughs> did I say shit some wisdom? I meant shoot some wisdom. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> <laughs> My mouth is... Well, it works. Jackie and Brandon Ryan, we're going to talk about education for our next podcast with with Stuart, who just had a brief conversation not too long ago with Neil Gorton. And we're going to talk about learning and teaching and the nature of learning and, and how people learn and how some people d- don't learn. <laughs> uh, and invite people to to write in and add their comments to this podcast so we can continue on you know, education is, is a frequent topic for Stuart and me 
and before we started recording, we were kind of talking a little bit about how we were hoping this was going. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit bummed that we didn't hit record to begin with because uh, we, yeah. we made, <laughs> we some, made some good made some great points, and I hope we can hoping we can keep keep coming back to to the same stuff. But to begin with, you know, why why do people learn? How do people learn? You know, Jackie, you as a teacher are in it daily and I, I know you, I know you have opinions uh, about about teaching and yeah. and learning um, I guess so there's so many different studies on teaching and learning and how people learn and learning styles kinesthetic auditory visual and now people are saying oh those don't exist those are a fallacy but everybody learns whether or not they want to. Some people have different motivations for learning. Oh, I want to graduate. I don't want to end up in jail. I don't want to work at McDonald's. I want to... Or in the Marine Corps. Hey, that's that's also a good reason (laughs) to study. Um, So, but when you're really learning and when you truly want to learn something, it's because you're interested in it. It's something you want to do, you want to make, you want to create, you want to get better at. Well, I'm very definitely a a visual learner, um, but I also have to have tactile mm-hmm. information as well you know i can i can watch a tutorial video i mean neil gorton has some amazing videos available uh online i can watch them till i'm blue in the face but if i don't get hands on with it mm-hmm. that information is just going to evaporate yeah it, that's exactly what happens in teaching ceramics i've been teaching ceramics since 2013 um, full time, and I can show videos, I can show the process, I can troubleshoot, but it doesn't do anything until kids get clay in their hands and they try and they fail. And then I tell them, like, you're gonna get frustrated, it looks easy, it's not, you're gonna get mad, this is what you need to do. And then they try it, and I say, okay, I can do this, I can do it. And my favorite thing teaching is the kids' first day on the wheel because they're so cocky and they're like, oh, I can do that, it looks easy. And they sit down, like, oh my god, why is it spinning? Well, it has to spin, it's, it's a pottery wheel, and so. They say it's so hard, and I tell them, like, you're going to have your highs and lows, and you're going to get it, you're going to get it, and then you're going to drop off, and you're going to suck. And everything you make, you're going to hate, and then you're going to get better, and then you're going to suck again. And then, like, they start recognizing that, like, oh, I'm learning this because I'm sucking right now, and I could do it yesterday, and I can't do it today. But I think that, especially being an art teacher, I don't think that other teachers realize that that tactile, that kinesthetic component is so important. Because, I mean, you can talk, you can listen, you can watch, but until you do something, you're not learning it, you're not getting it, you're not trying and practicing. Well, I think you also hit on a really important part of the learning process that some of my fellow educators, and I won't name names, (laughs) (laughs) um, have seemed to have forgotten that making mistakes is a big part of the learning process. Mm -hmm. If everything goes right all the time... Oh, you're yeah. not learning anything. You don't learn anything. No, because right? you don't know how to fix things. You don't know. You have to learn how to make mistakes with grace. And then you also have to learn how to pick yourself up off the floor. And you're like, wow, this sucks. I'm terrible at it. You need to buck up and try again. And that sucks. And nobody likes saying, wow, I failed. I sucked. Like the first time I assisted you when we were doing the moulage thing. And I was so excited. And then I did that really crappy bruising. I was like, oh, my God, this is so bad. But... I knew it was bad. You know it was bad. And so it's like, hey, I need to do better at this. And I knew it. You knew it. And so, but instead of like, oh, my God, I suck. I'm never going to get better. No. Then it was like, oh, hey, let's learn. Let's figure it out. And then it's getting better. And I know that I can get better. But instead of going and crying and feeling sorry for myself, like, hey, I fucked up. I can get better. Well, I don't think any artist is is ever going to say, oh, I'm just going to give up or... We, we have moments where, you know, we make mistakes. It, it happens all the time. You know, if, mm-hmm. in order to improve and get better, you're going to always continue to make mistakes. That's how you move to the next level. Right. But I don't think there's an artist out there who's ever thought, oh, shit, I'm just going to pack it all in and I'm going to see if Walmart's hiring greeters because <laughs> <Right. 'cause, laughs> I, I, just, <laughs> no. I just suck at this. Um, and I don't think it matters what level you're at. You're always going to have it. Stuart was mentioning to me just the other day. It's, he said, you know, every makeup he does, every demo he's going in to do, he's in the back of his mind thinking, 
I'm going to fuck this up. I, you, know, I, you know, I'm that way all the time. It's mm-hmm. like, God, why am I not getting any better? Way to be humble. But I, but I think the, the fact that I'm still thinking those things means that I'm on the right track. You know, yeah. I've said it many times. You've probably heard me say it before. Is like, oh, yeah. The moment you look at your work and, and say, that's it. I'm there. It's perfect. You're, you need to stop because yeah, it's time to dust off that Burger King application, <laughs> yeah, or you know, and, head over to Walmart because mm-hmm. you're you're not trying enough. No matter how good you get, there's always something you don't know that somebody can show you. There's yeah. always going to be room for improvement. Absolutely. Well, that's, regardless of your level. Yeah. Well, so it's interesting to me. And so, like the military, what they say is like, oh, pain retains. And so, why is it when you're a creative or an artist and you're trying to get up there? everything is so painful and then you're trying to learn and troubleshoot whatever your process is whether it's like prosthetics and makeup or throwing clay ceramics or in your case 3d like cg stuff um it's 100 percent painful almost all the time and something goes wrong or something crashes and you're not necessarily sure and you're very swicking up of thing and getting from a to b in the process but the artist or the one that wants to get from A to B suffers through that pain, learns from that pain. And like you said with Stuart, where he still questions himself going into every gig. Sure. And that's, and that's just another indication that Stuart's doing it right. Cause but that pain he, of maybe being in a situation where he didn't know everything, where he didn't know how to solve a problem, or he failed, spurs him forward. And he's now motivated to continue to improve while staying humble enough to remind himself, oh, you know, I'm not God's gift to whatever I'm doing, maybe. Yeah, I think the learning process better. is is a series of, of plateaus and steps. Right. That you you work on something, you you work at it until you get comfortable with it. And there's that plateau. Right. And you can choose to stay at that level where you feel you're where you're in your comfort zone and you're not improving, or you can push yourself back outside of your comfort zone again and keep fucking up and making mistakes and improving so that you're not making the same mistakes over and over again you're just making right. different mistakes yeah. exactly complacency kills until you yeah. until you yeah. get to that next level mm-hmm. and you feel comfortable doing something yeah and you can either stay there or you can push out of that again to get better and get to the next level I feel and like you know, it's there's like, an infinite number of levels. You know, yeah. Infinite. I don't, I, don't I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's possible to, to to reach perfection. No. Unless you're Mother Nature, and you know, the only perfect thing we've got, and it's not ours. It's you know, yeah. it's, it's you know, Jordy talks about it in, in character yeah, right. design, and oh, so, you know, the only perfection is nature. Right. Well, that's what I think too. About if you ask anybody who's established and who's like you, like Jordi, even like you, Brandon, and my kids so often, like beginners versus someone who gets it. Not even necessarily a master, but I think of how differently they look at their work versus how I look at my work versus uh, how I look at their work. So if I have a kid who's brand new starting the wheel throw, oh my God, this shit, I hate it. It's a lump of clay. I say, well, it still holds water because you want to encourage them. And say, well, why doesn't it look like yours? Well, because... I've been throwing since you were born. You were learning to walk. I was throwing. You were potty trained. I was throwing. You were in third grade. I was throwing. I've been doing this. So that's why your stuff doesn't look like mine. But then they say, oh, my God. They get to a point they make something. This is the best thing I've ever made. This is incredible. I'm so good. And then I do a demo, and then I destroy it. And they say, why'd you destroy it? Because I can do better. I can tell you a hundred things. Oh, it's perfect. No, that's your perception because I've failed more than you've even tried. And I think that, and that you know, nice. that's that's an important point right there. Is, you know, the yeah. master has failed more times than, than, the, the, than the beginner has yeah. even tried. Exactly. And I tell my kids, they say, well, how did you get so good? I said, I was in a studio class and I was throwing at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, and I was crying and, like, sobbing. I was throwing shit. I was throwing a fit. I was pissed off. I was making ugly things, but I was still in there. I was still working. I was persevering. Mm-hmm. And then I student taught and then I had to do it in front of other people. And then you had to learn to fuck up in front of other people. And that's, that's the worst. Well, I mean, that's a good way to learn humility, <laughs> but that you get good quick because then you can explain to somebody how to do it. And then it starts all over again every year. With well, every I think some of those kid. things, you know, 
I don't like making mistakes when I'm doing when I'm doing demos. Right. <laughs> but being able to and one of the benefits is I've been doing it long enough now that I don't get as rattled as I as I right. would have um, when I was first starting out. Yeah. But you look at those mistakes during a demo as a happy accident teaching moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you can say, here's what not because to you do. have to be able to fix it. Yeah, right. and show them right. how you to know, fix it. It's certainly in when it comes to to makeup and doing and doing prosthetic makeup. If you fuck up an edge during an application, the director doesn't care. Nope. No, he cares that you can you fix know, it because you were hired to do this. They're, they're shooting this in, in mm-hmm. 10 minutes. It better yeah. look better look good. Mm-hmm. So take those take those mistakes during a demo <laughs> and turn it into a teaching moment of, oh, my God, this happened. What am I going to do? Right. Well, you know, there's a half dozen ways to do everything. Mm-hmm. Do you guys get more excited when you have that opportunity as teachers to then say, oh, oh, oh hey, look, 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 okay, cool. Like, in a perfect demo, they won't Som- necessarily see sometimes. the adverse side effects of maybe a decision I made. I don't think my ego ever really oh. wants to... <laughs> To admit that that, uh-huh. I, that I make mistakes. Just say, I get like, excited about everything. everything, and so if we're throwing, if I'm sitting there with clay, then I mean, I I was always the dorky, awkward kid growing up, so I'm used to having people think I am not the coolest person in the room, and it's such a it was such a blessing in disguise teaching. Um, I my second and third year teaching, I worked at a really crappy pilot school, and so I taught sex ed to seventh and eighth grade. Oh, yeah. fun. Oh, that did. I'm not afraid of shit. I am not afraid of, I'm not afraid of stupid questions. I'm not afraid of looking stupid. And Awkward. That's, I'm not like, afraid of any, I mean, who wants go to talk nuts. about can... the male-female anatomy. <laughs> exactly. Length, I mean, when you have to explain know? an erection to a seventh grader, and yeah. then, I mean, and they look at you like, oh my God, I mean, you're a girl. Like, yeah, I've never had one, but you have to learn this. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm not afraid of looking stupid in front of kids. And so I'm like, okay, I mean, oh, this is a piece and you think it's perfect I can just show you XYZ here's what's wrong with it and then the nice thing is that with clay it's so fluid you can push something off center here's how to recenter it hey your bottom is five inches thick if you pick up a piece and say oh my god is that a grenade not whoa cool mug you did something wrong instead of saying here's how to avoid that and then so much of it is one on one attention and it's exhausting well I think it's important to if you're going to criticize a student's work I think it's important to also show what's good about it and you know because i think yeah. negative reinforcement exclusively is mm-hmm. going to do nothing to to help that student want to continue down a down a certain path no and i don't want to be the one to kill a kid's love for art and i mean ceramic and even makeup is such it's kind of a niche market it is a niche market it is and and, but and i don't want to be the one to kill that love but I think it's important to start with a positive. And I tell my kids, you know, I'll say, and they're like, oh, it's not good. Like, no, you're right, it's not. But there's still something good about it. Even if it's a lump of clay and you use 10 pounds of clay for something that you should have used one pound to make, it still holds water. And that is a plus. If that's the only good thing, then there's there's good in everything. But I think that kids get so down on themselves and they get so frustrated like oh it doesn't look like yours it's garbage well no it's not going to look like mine until you keep making garbage and making garbage and making garbage and then eventually that changes from garbage to kind of crappy to okay and then you'll be okay for a while and then while you're on your little stairway to heaven like i'm getting better i'm getting better you're gonna trip and you're gonna slide all the way back down but which kind of brings up the point of of you know with ceramics and with with makeup effects these are not basic core curriculum requirement courses no. these are these are what you'd call electives mm-hmm. or you know specialty classes yeah so which drives me what crazy. what motivates <laughs> the kids who want to get into the ceramics class you know i, I know the answer is probably the, the same as people that want to want to do makeup effects mm-hmm. you know so it looks easy. What are what it's are some cool. of the reasons it's cool. that people would want to get into it? It's cool. It looks it cool. Is it is cool. cool. We got TV cool. shows that talk is, about right. it. Is that is that a good like reason that. to do something? To some, apparently, it's motivating enough to get into a yeah, new I suppose program. it is, but but is but is that the, is that the right answer? You know, like, oh, I don't think it's the right no. answer, but it's it's 
you know, for if, marketing sake, you're like, okay, cool, I'll take yeah, whatever help I, I can get. But I think you know? if if um, it looks cool, he's, I want to be an animator because I like to watch ah, cartoons. Oh, That's like, oh, I wrong, can drive a car, wrong, I can fix it too. Wrong answer. Wrong. Totally hope you like having no work life balance if you want to be an animator or yeah. like any of this stuff. You yeah, know, for if, a long if you're, time. If you're going into it because you want the fame, you know what, you want to be on yeah. TV, you want people to recognize you. <laughs> Good luck. Wrong answer. Good luck. Uh, I hope you're pretty. If, if, you're I mean, do, if you're going into it because because of the money in ceramics or the money in in makeup effects, yeah. there's money. While it's possible possible to make money as uh, as a makeup artist, right? You know, it's not the right re- not the reason to to right. do it. No, right. um, because it's easy. No, well, it's not easy. No, no. it's it so looks easy. Definitely the wrong. It's if you're doing it right, if you're, it, it exactly, looks easy. it looks super easy. And kids say, "Oh, I want, that looks easy." We're like, "Well, here you go." Yeah, because you think oh, it'd wait. be fun. We're getting you getting in. The, yeah, that's the you right just direction, love doing it, it. You just but love it's doing still, it. Still, still not not the reason to want to do something. Right. You know, I think as as artists, whatever we've chosen to do, we do it because we can't not do it. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's weird because you've talked about, okay, using positive reinforcement to spur people forward, but at the same time, they are their own worst critic, which I know right. is And I think, I think that's important. You should be your own worst critic. You should be. You and should. that's why Stuart Bray still goes in and he's like, oh, am I going to do this or am I yeah. not going to do this? I mean, he obviously this. just does it. He doesn't. When he's still driving towards the destination he's going to, yeah, he may have trepidations on the way there, but he gets there and it's it's go time. Yeah. I imagine him like rolling his sleeves up and getting dirty, whatever yeah. he has to do. No, I would want instead Stuart, of Stuart having my back, any day. <laughs> right? Yep. So you get there where you have all this negativity that we give ourselves in the process, and then when you go to a teacher who can then potentially, um, and I had a question earlier when you were talking about it bringing up the positive reinforcement, where is that line where, okay, you know, I'm beating myself up as a student wanting to do this, regardless of the reason for my passion. You mentioned like the uh, fame, money, easy, all that stuff. It's just, when do you guys have to control the amount of positivity and say, okay, listen, like tough love. Do you know what I mean? I do. And I think tough love is so personal and it's so different to teachers because for some teachers, Tough love is, oh, you can't take your cell phone when you go to the bathroom, which that's not tough love. And so keeping a kid... That's, in just, the, that's just classroom discipline. Right. <laughs> well, right. it is. And not everybody, unfortunately, has that. And so many teachers rely on bribery and extrinsic motivation. And, oh, you went to your seat. Here's some candy. No, I'm not rewarding you for what... For basic behavior that you should do. Um, but as far as... God, that's so hard to describe because I mean it's so personal to the kid. Because right. I mean, I well, have I think, some kids I... with special needs that I mean they need so much more positive reinforcement. Sure. But then when I have kids, my AP kids, and a quarter's gone by and they haven't made anything, like what have you been doing? I'm sorry, you're tired. I'm sorry, you had other homework. You need to buck up. You got a D for me. You need to figure it out. Oh, hey, like. Or my kids, oh, I'm sorry that your play isn't working. I'm sorry you keep screwing up, but you've got to make something. You can't just give up. You can't say, oh, this is the best that I can do. And so pushing them, I think really when you start pushing a kid and saying, okay, like you're kind of getting it. Oh, you're screwing up. You're backing off a little bit. No, like you need to push harder. You need to work harder to get better. I think that's when the magic of teaching happens. And I think that's the hardest part of it. And unfortunately, I think every classroom is going to show you a bell curve of of the abilities in the classroom. Well, abilities and motivation, too. The high high point of the bell being the average, Mm -hmm. and the low point on the the left side of the bell Mm -hmm. is... No, right. no hope for these <laughs> for up. these people. They never no. showed up. Or yeah. the kids I don't that even show know up. What, and... I don't even know what this kid looks like. <laughs> and then the right yeah. side of the bell is that exceptional bunch that I should be taking classes from these kids. Right, right. right. Uh, and you know, you and I have both experienced it, and and I, you've you've seen it in in the classroom. Oh yeah, the whole spectrum, man. That. You know, there are students that have no business being in school yeah. at all. No. And the, the sad fact that they are there taking valuable time away from the exceptional students 
as well as the average yeah. mass of, of the class, uh, is a shame. And But you've got to give everybody equal time. That's right. just, just the Especially way the game the is played. To be fair. We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the podcast. Just to remind you that you can get in touch with us through email and our Facebook page to comment, ask questions, or make suggestions to us for future episodes. Now, back to the show. We'll pick up where we were talking about kids in specialty classes and whether they wanted to be there or not. Right. Well, I mean, some kids, because it's an electives class and because... Um, like as a specials, and I hate being called a specials teacher, a specialist, because art is a right. Everybody has a right to those classes. And yes, they're a privilege, and it's a privilege to be there and to use really cool materials. But at the end of the day, I don't think that, especially at the elementary level, oh, you don't get to go to art today as a punishment. I don't think that's right. But at the high school level, I have kids that have taken the makeup class and they take ceramics. Oh, it looks fun. It's easy. It's an art class. It's a blow off class. And then I have kids that don't do well and they, oh well this isn't what I thought it would be it's not easy it's not fun it's not xyz and then they become an issue because then I have to focus on behavior management with them mm-hmm. and then they haven't paid their fee so they're wasting supplies some of which can't rep- I mean you can't melt down silicone and use it again and they're not washing their materials and I mean, like, yes, it's important that everybody have access to those and learn about those. But at some point, there's got to be a line somewhere that, hey, you failed this class. You don't get to continue on to level two because you're wasting everybody's time. You're wasting everybody's oxygen now because you're just coming in behaving like a complete freaking idiot. And then you're wasting these materials. And then that's when it starts affecting other kids. And I think that's where that line needs to be drawn that, no, I mean, in math, like you can waste so much graphite and pencils and you can waste time, but in classes where it's a material and then they, oh, I haven't paid my fee. Oh, well, I mean, you have a new iPhone. You come in with Wendy's every single day, but you can't pay your fees because it's an expectation that it's given to them. That, oh, I can come in and you have to give me this and we have to be able to use all of these amazing That's supplies. That's a good point that you're making. Uh, the the entitlement that, that some of the yeah. kids have today is because they've, they've paid for a class that mm-hmm. they don't want to get their hands dirty they just, <laughs> they just want the information they don't they want they don't want to have to work for that knowledge yeah or oh will you do it for me what well, then, i have kids ask me that all the time oh will you just do it for me no i'm not right. learning how to do this or i have kids like even in ceramics oh well can i buy a i'll trait you one in your in. doctor <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I mean, you. oh, can I have what? Can I buy a mug from you and turn it in? No, I made that. I'm not. I don't care if you make a perfect mug. I care that you learn something. And that... kids ask that, or oh, well, will you just do this for me? Or why do you get mad? Why did you rip up my paper because so and so was just helping me? No, he's not helping you. He's doing it for you. I would rather you make a mistake honestly then turn in a perfect assignment that you didn't even put your hands on. That's not what the learning is. Learning is uncomfortable and it's messy and it's scary and it's frustrating, but it's learning and that's how you improve. That's how you get better. If it was easy, everybody would do it. If it was easy, just everybody would be Michael Phelps. Everybody would be an Olympic bowler. I think Phelps bowling. got, cause he, he Olympic got. bowling. Is is there, a, well, there's curling. Thing? There must be Olympic bowling. Well, exactly. If, if curling I mean, is Olympic level sport, bowling should be. I'm not trying to, to diss be, curling. No, no, I'm just it. saying. Like, you don't get to be the on. best by having. I mean, nobody else swims for Michael Phelps. Nobody else is busting her ass like Simone Biles is. Like she's the best because she's constantly trying and constantly. I mean, probably not failing as much, but I mean, she's still working on technique. And I'm sure what she sees as. Sure. Well, we see incredible, and she says, "Oh no, that's a failure. I can do so much yeah, better." No, I, I think that the ten thousand hours adage is is very true. Right. So that, getting into like the ten thousand hours. So where like that high school free education uh, sans, you know, like fees and stuff, like everything you have to pay for materials. But why is that not a filter? Because for Todd, when you get into the higher level of education, these people are paying like. Ninety thousand dollars to have you stand in front of you know twenty thirty people and they have the same exact attitude. They still don't necessarily want to be there, or they get bored easily, and yep. all they want to do is draw like Dragon Ball Z characters, and they don't know why animation is so hard. Yeah, the one exception to yeah. to that to that um, template that you were just describing at the at the college level 
would be a special topic class like makeup effects right where there is an additional fee because of the materials yeah yes my my time and expertise is part of their tuition mm-hmm. cost but for this one specialty class there are materials that are above and beyond just the information. If they want to learn mm-hmm. how to do it, they've got to get their hands dirty doing it. So there's an there's an added cost to them for that. But the students that are taking that class want to be there. All That's, of them that, for that partic- for mm-hmm. that stuff. Okay. Yeah, they're they're taking this class because they want to know how to create prosthetic pieces. Gotcha. They want to know how to do a life cast. They want to mm-hmm. know how to to do basic mold making. They want to learn how to do this stuff. Now, maybe some of the motivation behind behind them wanting to do it is somewhat wrong headed because okay. you know they want to be a gore artist. They love they love <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. They uh, love gore. I love uh, gore too. <laughs> You know, it, it is cool. Who doesn't? You know, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I want to do intestines. It's, and only it's intestines fun, but out of is being a gore artist a career? No, no. It's like no you know, way. Stuart. Stuart mentioned this in in a conversation with Rick Baker. Is you know, it's like, oh, I want to be a mechanic, but I only want to do red pickup trucks um, <laughs> with white wall tires and and left hand steering. Mm-hmm. I yeah. only want to do oil changes. Yeah. And cars made market. from it's, it's 1982 to 1987. A very That's narrow it. slot. And it's to it gore gore makeup, it's not to to poo-poo it, but gore gore's easy. It's so easy. It's not it's not challenging. I mean, it, of course it's fun to make people say ew, but I mean even my kids, but they say, oh, that's so easy, and then their edges look like shit. They burn their gelatin. Oh, this isn't really easy. I say, okay, well, you wanted to learn this. I'm showing you how to learn. Oh, I don't like it. And then, oh, I just want to be a gore artist. You don't like what you're doing now. You don't like working with gelatin, and I'm not... I'll be damned if I'm giving you silicone, because at least gelatin you can remake. But their solution now is, oh, I'm just going to put some more blood on it. And it's just... And Physically there you go. Painful next to look next at. stop like, is a is a coke can to the face and a pencil <sighs> through the nose. <laughs> and I mean, you're or the not... or the ever popular zipper face. Oh yeah. Zipper. Well, then they're like, oh, oh well, yeah. I'm going to work at a haunted house. Doing what? Selling tickets? Because not with that shit you just made. And <laughs> they and I and that's one of those things too is that they're like, oh well, you're just a teacher. What do you know? Well, I mean, I'm teaching it because I know just at just least a teacher more yeah. than you do, and I'm showing you just. how to do this. And like, oh well, you know, how come you're not in the industry? Oh, uh, because I am not good enough. That's just like I was doing a demo. They said, oh my god, you could be a potter in Japan. I said, uh, no, I could not. I cannot hold a candle to them. I, I'm still like fairly new to this. And they see somebody go, they're like, oh, how come you're not famous? Because it's not that easy, and they don't want to hear the it's not that easy part. And they think, oh, you're wrong. What do you know? Okay, well, and then I had another kid. We were doing an artist study, and they were like, oh, Michael Westmore, what does he know? Okay, well, I've failed somewhere along the line. Someone's failed. I don't know if it was me, but they think it's so easy, and they get so fixated on one thing that they think is easy, and then they can't do it, and then, oh, well, this is stupid. Oh, but I'm going to get a job doing it. I don't, it's, oh, it's sure. very odd circle of semi-success, but they're failing and they hate it, but they just want to be automatically good at it. So they think they're going to make a career out of it. So why is it that we only, how like, does, how does that happen? Where does that come from? Yeah. Why do we only care about, oh, I see successful person and have no regard for the journey to get there. Like, because they don't whatsoever. see that. What we see on social media now is so edited. It's like, That's true. it's, I mean, they just see, oh. How many likes do you get? How many oh, likes do you get? Matters. And oh my God, you're so good at this. You're so perfect. They're not seeing people in the studio crying. They're, they're not seeing molds failing. They're not seeing running foam latex two and three and four times because of air bubbles. They don't see that. They see the finished product and think, oh, it's easy to get there because I just uploaded this picture so I can do that too. And then they walk into my class thinking, oh, I'm going to be on Face Off. Bitch, I'm not going to be on Face Off, so I don't know what you think you're going to do, but they see it and they're like, oh, well, yeah, that looks really cool. Yeah, there are also 19 different steps to get there and you're like 0.5 way through this first one. But and they don't see that. They yeah, don't think, you, you oh, don't see do the behind-the-scenes stuff. No. And, uh, you know, 
be nice to be able to do some of those huge makeups in two days. Oh, that'd be oh, amazing! Yeah. Exactly. I bet everybody says, "I wish," right? <laughs> wish Keep in one hand yeah. and poop in the Half other, and the see what fills up yeah. faster. Because mm-hmm. it's you know these are the kids that don't know who Rick Baker is or no, Dick they don't Smith. know. They or know who Todd Debrasini is. I'm like, hey, I have this book. My friend wrote this book. Oh, can we meet him? No, you have not earned that. Oh well, if he's a friend of yours. <laughs> Yeah, but why also, do you want to meet him? Well, exactly. Like, oh, do you because want to meet him because he, you also geek out about yeah, makeup effects? No, or do you just because, want to meet him because he wrote a book? Exactly, book, because I said you know he wrote I mean? this book. He's awesome. He's he my mentor. Something. Yeah. Like, you think what he's going to offer you a job? Like, that's not... Like, tell me what he does. But you say he and might. And then, no. He no. Might. He definitely no, will no jobs. not. <laughs> not going to happen. And so... They just, so many kids, unfortunately, expect something for nothing, and they think that they're That's owed true. this, they're owed their dream set, they're owed their opportunity, and then a little part of me wants to say, hey, here you go, go go rent out a booth, save up the money for zombie crawl. So how do we change that mentality? I'm scared Tortured. we can't. Torture. Because of social media and Instagram, I mean, I, you can tell someone, just like with everyone, you can tell someone, this is what it takes until you're blue, but they're not going to get it until they go through. They try, they fail, they try again, they fail again, they keep persevering. All of that is intrinsic. So they'll either keep going on that path and they'll keep making two steps and then they'll fall back down and then they'll keep persevering at it or they're going to give up and go somewhere else. But I'm worried that the likes culture, the easy, that everything is so curated online, it looks so easy that kids don't know how to try and persevere and they don't know how to keep going when it sucks. Then so, they just find something else to do. So is that, that a parenting problem? It is. Is it um, societal? I think it's part of it is parenting. Part of societal. Part of it is the American education system. Because pardon me, but we're fucked with <laughs> no child left behind. Now we have kids that get to high school. That Everybody can't gets read. a trophy just for showing up. Exactly. They they're they're passed along, and then they say, "Oh, how come test scores are so abysmal?" Because kids can't read, and they're not held accountable until they get to high school. And then it's go time, and then it really counts in, oh, shit, our kids are illiterate. Yeah, you can't go back and get that nine, ten years. You just have to make do with what you can. So then scores get lower, standards get lower, and then mediocrity becomes a standard, and that just gets lower and lower and lower. Because Makes me want to watch the Mike Judge film Idiocracy again. <laughs> I've never seen it, but I want to. <laughs> oh, oh, you're in for a treat. Yay, I love treats. I, I think we are living it now. It's it's scary and it's sad and I hate that that's the way that it is. But well, aren't there people that would argue that oh, you just didn't try hard enough, and so that's the filter. So only the people, regardless of reason for not trying, are the ones that I care about. And so screw everybody else that didn't just show up and have the gumption to be here with like you guys as an example. I mean, I think that you would have seen that five. 10 years ago but the oh I'm going to prove everybody wrong that's gone It's it, it doesn't look like it was perfect the first time and I didn't get X amount of likes on it and I'm not going to post this crappy stuff and I'm just going to find something else it's like the Kardashian culture <laughs> I'm I'm enough for what I can do so I should be rich and famous for doing nothing well Brandy you're coming into this whole thing from from a different perspective of of most college students because you've had military experience yeah well that just changed my attitude in school towards my peers who would show up again i mentioned how expensive some of these programs can be and that's why i asked the question earlier of you have like 100 percent rate of people that give a fuck when they show up versus when i went through college six percent people gave a shit and the rest of them were just there because like you said earlier they they saw a cartoon they like or they love animated feature films disney pixar you know cartoon network stuff and they think oh i just have to sit in a room in front of a computer for four years and then i will be yeah i don't have to i don't have to i don't need to know how to draw because the computer will do everything for me yeah like they don't think about the process at all going back to the curated online world we kind of you know inhabit these days it's just no, there's got to be that do or die attitude. I don't want to sit there and say you can't wake up and be like, oh, I'm not feeling it today. Everybody's going to have those days. But, you know, the next day you're back at it. And so where me and my other, uh, and this isn't exclusive to just veteran students, it's just you see other people who show up who just give a fuck 
and will take their licks and just show the world their failures. You know, you go up for a critique in front of your teachers and they bash you in front of, you know, these other mm-hmm. kids. And it's such a difficult thing to just, you know, be forced to go up there and put art it's you spent an hours yeah. on. And yeah. you're told it's shit. You, yeah, you're told shit after hours and hours, weeks of work. But you need that. You do. I, you know, looking on the other side of a degree, it's like, yeah, I definitely needed that. Mm-hmm. But why did I, and I don't necessarily think it was just because of the military background, show up and do it and get through it when a lot of other people, which I think still happens, the college I went to, I will not name the name for any sort of positive anything because it's just dog shit school, but there were people that absolutely did not deserve that degree that now have Mm -hmm. the same degree I have regardless of effort. And sure, you have like your sumas and these various award, like portfolio show awards. But at the same time, when somebody's objectively looking at like a, you know, just a resume sans portfolio, you are an equal to them. And so it's like, yeah, that person put in zero effort. I put in all the efforts. And yeah, that's why you have portfolios. And then you get weeded out, et cetera. Yeah. But man, $90,000 four years of their life and they have nothing to show for it. Well, I can, part of it, I can, I have my opinion of why kids go to college. One, they think they have to. Two, they have no idea what they want to do. Oh, that's true too. Because. Been, some part of it's their, their parents told them to. And then right? the other part is, oh, it's my GPA and I have, I'm <laughs> fighting to keep one of my classes alive right now because if I don't have 25 kids show up, they're going to cancel it. And kids yeah. say, well, you know, it's not weighted. I said, no, it's not weighted. Oh, well, why isn't it weighted? I don't have my master's yet. Why not? Well, one, I don't get paid enough. Two, I can do a good job for you guys. Three, I'm on a limited income right now. So unless you want to give me $60,000 so I can get my master's so that your GPA can get better, please, by all means, let's make that happen. But kids are, they're passing up art classes, they're passing up science classes, and they're passing up all of these classes that they could be interested in. They could learn something they didn't know they wanted to do. But they don't want to take it because of their GPA, because it's a number and it's a numbers game. And I tell them, guys, you can have a 5.0. You're not going to, but you're 4.6, 4.7. And when you get to college and the kid puking in the toilet next to you or on your feet or wherever had the same GPA as you, but it doesn't fucking matter. It is a number and you are a number. And this whole, oh, stop treating me like a number. Stop acting like one. Take the class that you're interested in. Learn something new. Struggle through something new. If I do had well known, in it, no matter what it is. Yeah, just right. do. Don't just fly or at by. Least try. Yeah, but don't just take classes because you're worried about what a number on a piece of paper that's going to be completely inconsequential in the year after you graduate. That stops. No nope, people stop caring. You get into college. That's it. You're good to go. Your GPA doesn't mean shit. And I'm not saying don't try. Try. Do the best you can do. Have goals, and that's important, but not everybody is going to be the best. And if you're going to go to college having some kind of idea of, hey, I'm interested in this. I'm interested in music. I'm interested in art. I might want to be a culinary artist. I love cooking. All of these things that I'm excited about instead of, yeah, I took every AP class I could. Uh, I don't know what I want to do. Well, then you're going to waste that $90,000, and then you're going to have a degree that you don't care about, and then you've wasted even more people's time and money, your own included. Well, I think that's one, I think that's one of the keys to success in whatever studious endeavor you're you're undertaking is is being passionate about it. Okay, so yeah. with that, do you feel like when you have these specialty classes, that's why you have a higher level or a higher caliber person showing up? Is because they've gone through the phase, and when does that phase happen of figuring out what you want to do? So if I specifically want like Stuart Bray or Todd Debrasini or Jacqueline Ryan to teach me something, they don't teach me everything, and they're not going to teach me what you know what I want to do. But I've already figured that out at whatever stage in my development, and now I know I'm going to reach out to these people and have them then teach me this very. A specific and linear path where I'm not distracted by, oh, I might be, you know, an Instagram model someday, or I want right. to be a cook, or everything else you just enumerated. So, how does that, and you mentioned parenting, and it's a cultural thing, obviously. Sure. It's just very complicated. When do you get to that point of from high school or even college where it's like, hey, come in here because you want to be here? Right. Well, I think it, yeah, I think to. you could, you could tie it to experiential, uh, existence you know right what have you seen or done or heard in your life you know mm-hmm. kids that are that are sheltered 
that do nothing but sit in the basement playing video games, a, a particular video game yeah. that have that have never traveled, that have never never played sports, never right. done all, of, never experienced myriad other things in their lives, are going to be more narrow-minded when it comes to what do I want to learn how to do? You but, know, what what are my choices? But as than somebody who has is an open book and, yeah. and wants to try everything. So we, the GooCon we were at, I remember the age of the child that showed up, and it's like they're already on the path. Oh, and yeah. they're like, what, nine years old or something? And they already know oh. what they want to do, and they're already getting good at it. Like, yeah. was, that nine-year-old was, doesn't have the life experience of me or you or you, so how did that nine-year-old is still got older, that He vision? was older than that. Okay, but, uh, I apologize to that person. But, I just... <laughs> But I think he, I think uh, he and his and his friends were, um, and I'm not going to name names. You, you know who you are. Yeah, um, you're awesome. I uh, think they were at that GooCon. They yeah. were in junior high. Okay, but they still had that clarity of vision. Yeah, that you you don't yeah, get right. from like and you oh should I'm see his 48 work now. and I know what I love. Oh, you I can only imagine. Now. It's probably legit. Yeah, yeah. It's just that sounds cool. That individual has it or has that whatever it is right. how quantifiable it is versus it takes other people sometimes you know 30 years to figure out oh this is what i want to do this is my passion yet this you see this child over here just bossing it from yeah. day one it seems like so i feel like the experiential thing yeah. doesn't hurt well, but I, it's, I think, it's well not i think necessary. part of that's also he has very supportive parents. Okay, right. That's probably a huge factor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Having that, really cool parents that were happy to indulge his mm -hmm. his desires, and that's you know, it it becomes um, a, a breeder reactor at that point where it feeds on feeds off itself um, because he's enthusiastic about it, and his parents were willing to support that. His enthusiasm grew, grew yeah. and. Since then, people within the industry have been reaching out and offering advice and help, and that's that's how magic happens. So if I have shit parents, what do I do? Am I screwed? No. You know what I mean? Because no. so much of teaching, I've discovered, is relationship, and mm -hmm. that's one thing. Teaching art is hard. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. And it gets harder and harder the more I do it. But I've discovered that um, my room is like the island of the misfit toys, like the little <laughs> yeah. red nosed reindeer. And I have kids that say, I want to take a class from you. I don't like ceramics. I don't want to get dirty. But Miss Ryan, I really like you. And relationships are so important. If a kid has somewhere they feel safe, somewhere they feel like someone believes in them, even if they're not the best kid, even if they're not even if they get suspended, even if they fight, even if they turn in half-ass work. If a kid is with you and you make them feel safe, you can give them that relationship. And you can't replace a parent. Nobody can replace sure. a parent. Yeah, but because sure. kids spend so much time at school, especially at the high school level, right. I have kids that come visit me in the morning. Hey, I came to school. Hey, I'm here. This is what happened this weekend. Hey, I'll see you at lunch. They come eat lunch in my room. Hey, I have an off period. How can I help you? Hey, are you staying after school today? And so kids, they will latch on to different teachers because they crave that relationship. They crave that love. It's something the, they're not getting elsewhere. Exactly. Right. Even if it's tough love, even if it's, hey, you need to buck up. You need to figure it out. They still will keep coming back. And even I think the art department has that um, because we don't have those limitations of kids necessarily feeling stupid, kids that don't speak English as their primary language, kids that um, are the oddballs and they're mm -hmm. the outliers and they feel judged. And the art community, I, community, I feel like it's expected that no one's going to judge you. And so that's why kids are so drawn to it. And then they just have to take one class with one teacher, doesn't matter who, and then they'll just right. click and then that's it. And then they're hooked. And then I had a freshman say, oh, I want to be a ceramics teacher. I said, oh, honey, <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome, and my yeah, heart right. burst, and it broke at the same time, because this kid loves ceramics, he wants to try it, that's amazing, but it's like, it's so hard, Go and on. I want so much more for this kid, but how amazing would it be to have inspired, like, this kid's life passion and his choice? So going back to the motivations for doing it, right? You want to sit there and tell this person, you're not going to be a millionaire, you're not going to be famous, yeah. but if you really if want, you want to do it, they're going to do yeah, it. Yeah, if you want to cry and 
have your heart break and, <laughs> and I mean, bring granola bars for kids and realize that if a kid's mad at you, they probably haven't eaten anything. Like, that's the first thing you right. ask. They don't teach you that in teaching school. No, that's it's one of the, the joys of joy and, and pain of, of teaching is, you know, I teach for selfish reasons. And I, you've heard me say this before, yeah, again, yeah. that, you know, I, I get off on seeing people get excited about the stuff that floats my boat. Mm-hmm. Right. That that is cool for me. That anybody actually learns anything from me yeah. is icing on the cake. Right. But in terms of students that latch on because of the relationship, you know, they they're forming a bond with you. Yeah, you've got to be open enough and open enough and perceptive enough to recognize that to be able to see that desire for them to. To have what you have, to be able to do what you do, mm-hmm. and help help foster that. It's always been great fun for me in my sculpture classes. Most of the students have never touched clay before in their lives, and if they have, it maybe it was it was play doh when they were a kid. That was my experience. That's it. Yeah. But <laughs> invariably, in every class, there's at least one student. Who's never done it before, and has found a gift that they had no idea they had. That's so cool. And when to that see happens. to see this stuff being created by someone who's never done it before, working as though they've been doing it all their life. I I can't even put words to that feeling. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's cool because there's so much potential. And I think that potential is magical and seeing a light bulb turn on and seeing somebody realize, oh my God, just seeing that light bulb turn on and just this moment and you can't bottle it and you can't replicate it. But when that one genuine, like you see, like, it's like seeing somebody fall in love with somebody or something. It is the coolest thing. Absolutely. And it makes sleepless nights it makes emails from parents and <laughs> fights and, i mean no, all it, the, i mean it does all the bullshit <laughs> exactly worthwhile. all of the paperwork and... so where so you really good point you mentioned like the relationship so when does the teacher and their effort towards the student have to meet that student's effort towards the teacher because I, I was venting earlier about oh kids i don't give a shit and i'm over here busting my ass and well, why do they get this type of degree blah 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 so we talked about the the younger gentleman earlier, everything where you guys have expressed where it's like from the point of view of a teacher, mm-hmm. but say you have a room full of youngins that just don't give a shit. Like, is that necessarily the teacher's fault or is there legit responsibility on the part of the student that has to kind of meet you air quotes halfway? So to speak? Well, there should be, there should be, but should be. I don't think that society and biased parents and this department of education, I don't think that they, make that very clear and there are some kids i will always work harder than the kid and that's a controversy in education you should never work harder than your kids no i don't i disagree with that and and i think it's also you know will never give a shit and you i think are also going to have form a, a stronger bond with some students that you don't form with others that's mm-hmm. that's just human nature so yeah. i'm having a hard time you, know, you can't please everybody I you see can't. Todd, I see Jackie focusing on other kids, and maybe I'm just like, you know, the self-fulfilling prophecy. Where it's like, oh, she doesn't, or he doesn't care about me, so I, I that's the sign that I need to quit. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When, yeah, maybe it's 100% because I didn't show up to begin with, and now I'm going to tell myself that their lack right. of give a shit over what I'm doing or contributing to this relationship, student to teacher, is now another reason that I'm going to like, air, you know, back out. Well, I had I had right. one student in in one of the sculpture classes. I don't I don't think it was in in your class, but it was in one of the classes. First time I saw this kid was midterm. <laughs> nice. And I just <laughs> said, I, love I, said, and I just said, go drop this class. Do it like yeah. And I said, you know, I don't know who you are. <laughs> go drop this class right now. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so I, yeah, it's all I you. It just sounds like it's all on the teacher Most to facilitate all this, and it, like so, all it sounds like, it's like, oh man, the, t- the student has it so easy. Not to discount the amount of effort you do have to put in, but the student has it so easy when you have people that give a shit about you in general, and yet people still just kind of dismiss it and 
yeah, walk and away before unfortunately, they there will yeah. always there will always be those who just don't get it. But they should, why do they show up? That's so weird to me. Why do they? Why are they? I mean, there? at the high school level, they're going to be in trouble with their parents. Their phones going to get taken away. Right. Their the truant officer is going to come haul them off. Oh yeah, which, right. That's haul them off to truant I mean, we jail. don't even have that anymore. I wish we did, and you would think that I know. And it was like, oh, I mean, that'd be amazing. But like, no, I mean, I have kids that are on trespassing tickets and they get in trouble and they get a ticket for being in the commons instead of class and then sometimes they show up again and sometimes they don't and they just kind of flutter around so but there's some but at i think i try to reach every kid i mean it sounds so idealistic i try but then i mean now we're to the point in the year that you can tell the kids that are showing up for the easy a they're getting the d's the f's and then it just gets to the point that hey do you need help no you're good okay then I choose to spend my time on the kids that are interested in one try. And I'm not saying I completely ignore the kid, but no, but you, over I mean, time you learn, yeah, you like, learn you to don't recognize mm-hmm. the ones that aren't going to improve no matter what you do. Exactly. I'm not going to care for the you. The ones who are on the, on the fence could go either way, depending mm-hmm. on how involved you want to get with them. Yeah. <clears throat> and the ones that are going to succeed regardless of, of your involvement, but those are the yeah. ones that you you tend to gravitate towards because so. you see this potential and you want to you want to make sure that they get everything they want. Right, and you want to cultivate them. You want to cultivate their love and help them to be the best that they can be. So one day, maybe you'll see that light bulb turn on. You'll see that spark. So curated online world we live in today, this is all information that I imagine a lot of students don't have because they don't necessarily recognize why a teacher does or does not do something. And so say you are a student, I don't know who you're like, the level of listenership you have, and you see or recognize that in your professor, teacher, um, you know, just class. And now what do you then say and say, oh, oh, I don't want to be that guy or gal that's being ignored. Is it because of, like, my action or lack thereof? Do I now need to step up and do more? The kids that are asking that question. So that's what you're saying, right? Uh, That's brilliant. You have to to learn to recognize what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. It is hard. But it's not impossible. Not impossible. I'm just saying that curated world we live in where you don't get to see any of the hard knocks of the process. Right. You don't necessarily know that that's part of the process. And so then again, it sounds like it's just right back on the teacher to let you know. Right. Either as a group or individual. Like, Which hey, is fine. And, and I'm, you know, this. I've, yeah. I've, it's, it's no, no secret that I'm an advocate of making mistakes. Right. You, I think yeah. you have to make, mis- yeah. you have to make mistakes in order to learn anything. Who, well, school is a safe place to make mistakes. That's what you're supposed yeah, to do. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're going to make mistakes, do it while you're in school rather than on the job because right, that that's, way. that's a great way to get mm-hmm. get unemployed. That's what school is Exactly. Instead of school, is, you can school get, is where you make mistakes. It's where you screw up. It's where you fail. It's where you learn and where you get better. If you just keep making the same mistakes or give up, and what you had said is, oh, you're really introspective and not the kids with the D's and the F's that are taking the classes to get the easy A that don't give a shit. They're not saying, oh, you know, how can I get better? It's, oh, the teacher doesn't like me. She's such a bitch, whatever. Well, right. you show up to my class late every day. You talk through my lectures and then you don't pay attention. What what more would you like for me to do? My job twice? Sorry. No, thank you. I'm going to focus <laughs> on A, B, and C over here that cared, that bothered to show up on time, that if they were like because they were in the bathroom at least they're paying attention but if you're gonna fuck off you can't expect a teacher especially a high school teacher to come in and do the caring for you well, yeah, but it's like the guy also... like the guy who showed up for the first time to sculpture class Mid- at midterm yeah. yeah expecting if i'd let him stay in the class and okay i'm gonna work with you exclusively to get you caught up no no, no. that makes no sense at all exactly and then and it's so selfish too the oh well i was late so you do your job again I'm sorry. No, just like when kids turn in late work. Oh, well, how come my grade wasn't updated? Well, because when assignment is due, I I set aside time, two hours to grade that and to get your grades updated, do everything I need to do. So when you turn it in late, I have a list of other things that I need to do. And if it's just one of you, yeah, but it's not. It's 13 of you all here, there, everywhere across the board. And it's that instant gratification. Well, I turn it in. It's your job to care. You're the teacher. You do this. I'm failing because you don't like me. It's, immediately yeah but they don't see that and then they're not asking themselves the question why this why that but then 
going into the expectation of, okay, high school kid, potentially harder life outside of school than their peers, and they then show up, and you mentioned, oh, you initially start out trying it through the process, you know, time of going through the courses, you then learn who's worth your time and who's not. Right. And But then, at what level, again, is it the fault of just exterior circumstances preventing you from reaching that passion figuring it out you know there are kids that have to go get jobs in high school to support their families right. because their parents can't do so sure. but those are so the how kids. are they going to find their passion when they're right. worried about putting food on their brothers and sisters tables and then you know when they're 30 i mean i'm not saying we're judging them at all like no, i hope you eventually all. get there it's just well, those, those are the people kids exist, and we you, have to deal with that. Yeah, you build that relationship. You find mm-hmm. out, hey, why are you late to my first period class every day? Oh, like you learn that. But what I'm yeah, talking about, yeah, once you about, understand what the yeah. extenuating circumstances mm-hmm. are, you can you can f- figure a game plan yeah. you know, to to either be able to help them or mm-hmm. direct them someplace where they can get. What they right. need. Yeah. If, you, right. if you're unable you're to incapable. provide, that, if you're incapable right. of doing that, I'm talking about the the late kids. I I just want to clarify that it's the kids that the, my class is right after lunch and they're showing up 15 minutes late and they have a wing stat bag in their hand or they have Chipotle <laughs> or they stopped at yeah. Starbucks. Like you're late because my class wasn't important to you. If I have kids right. that are showing up late, the first thing I do is check their schedule. What do they have before this class? And if a kid is angry that isn't usually angry, when's the last time you ate? And then, oh, you're late to my first period every day. Or, hey, you want to leave early every day. Why? And and find out. And then you find out, oh, you were up until 2 o'clock in the morning doing homework because your mom got off work late or because your mom works nights. Then you can work with those kids. But when kids are coming in making excuses, oh, I'm late. And, I mean, and if it's an every single day thing, you just don't give a shit about my class. That's fine, but right. don't expect my attention because you couldn't bother to be here when I give you announcements, when I tell you this is what we're doing, this is the agenda, here's the demo. And I say, hey, I'm going to give a demo. If you don't get it, you need to come watch this. Oh, well, I can do it. No, you can't do it. That's why I'm giving this <laughs> demo, and I can show you, and you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot oh, make that. And even when I, I don't allow cell phones in my class, they... I mean, the they have, level, sca- yeah. yeah, but even without Which that distraction, at the college level, that's probably not a bad idea I either. Mean, even well, they without those, need it. No, yeah. but even without those distractions, there are still kids that aren't paying attention. Like I could shoot fireworks on my butthole and kids wouldn't pay attention because at the end of the day, you can be engaging. You can do everything by the teaching book, right? X, Y, and Z. But there are some kids that just aren't going to care. They right. might care about another class. But they might not care about your class, and it's nothing that you did wrong. It's nothing you did right. It's just the way it is. And I think that that's something that people don't like. It's human error and just the way of humanity. And yeah, there you have it. If you have any other <laughs> world problems you'd like us to take on, uh, <laughs> you can reach us at Stuart and Todd at gmail dot com. And <laughs> teachers are awesome. I feel like that's yeah. the lesson. Just well, respect your teachers. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Shucks. The one person that said it. So, what are your plans once you've got Abby Chase out? You're gonna you're gonna clean that up and, and paint her, or is is it a, a painty thing? Are you gonna mold it and cast it? Yeah, it, it'll depend on how well it turns out. Uh, I'll I'll clean it up and maybe make a mold of it. Uh, though you know, I I can't really sell it to anybody, so I'm I'm not sure if I'll go to the trouble of making a mold of it. But maybe I'll maybe I'll paint it. I just mm. have to see how well the print turns out. Okay. Uh, just more of an exercise of seeing if I could get something that looked pretty good. And Scott Campbell actually saw it and didn't say, "How dare you?" So, oh, that's cool. I I feel pretty good that pretty good in that respect. Mm. You know, for those of you who don't know, Scott Campbell um, is one of the creators of, of Danger Girl. Who Abby Chase is a member of Danger Girl, and. He is a Colorado native, um, though I think he and his wife have moved to L.A. now. But he's been to the house before, you know, back when I was was at the, at the Art Institute. Um, mm, I didn't know that. He'd come in and, you know, we, you know, so we've we've met a few times and he's a great guy. So what is your obsession? Is it, Are you like a big comic book geek? No, it's just, I just, I just love the way he draws. I love his, his style of illustration. Uh, he draws everything really well, uh, and Danger Girl just 
It was kind of a James Bondy, James Bond meets Charlie's Angels kind of thing, mm. and I I kind of I kind of dug that idea. I um I found um, a comic book on the tube years ago, uh, and it was called uh, Missionary Man, and it was uh, it was 2000 AD type comic. I think it may have been a character in 2000 AD that was expanded into a, you know a, a book of it. Uh, and it was drawn, or one of the guys that drew it was was Frank Quitley. I don't know if you know him. He's a Scottish chap, and he's amazing. No. Really, really cool. He did Flex Mentallo and loads of like Justice League stuff and lots of stuff for Marvel. Um, but uh, beautifully, beautifully crisp, detailed stuff. Um, uh, and, and yeah, and it was like just by sheer chance finding this on a, on a train, and I was like, wow. I'm just looking through it, and I had to look this guy up and buy more of the comics because I just loved I'm not particularly interested in the stories I just love the drawings you know um, which was uh, you know new for me because when I grew up reading comics it was all about the story and all that kind of stuff so, so yeah, yeah. It was, it was, uh, well Scott draws you know D- The Danger Girl is published by an imprint of, of DC Comics and Scott's been working on some Spider-Man stuff and you know some other other properties in the DC universe mm. Is Which it, he posts on if you I don't know if you follow him on Instagram. Or no, not. I don't, but I think I will now. Um, because one of the things I find quite interesting is now you've got a lot more sort of like you know there's a lot more digital work involved, obviously in comic book drawing and, and you know coloring and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Necessarily like everything, um, but because what I find quite interesting is um, the notion that you know you could model stuff up in 3D and pose it, and then you know get your frames from that. Because today I was playing around with drawing and I thought, oh, I wonder there must be like figure posing apps and you know there's a whole bunch there was a couple that there was one called wizard pose i think Uh, it was like a free app and it's just like you know and obviously you can upgrade and pay for it but you can get basically posable 3d figures Mm -hmm. which is like wow so you could do stuff like that where which which i i have several of those oh the the little actual figures i've got some of those posable figures this is is a a digital yeah that you can change change their hands and feet and right right no this but this is it this is an app this is an app, so they're just digital models. They're not real. Ah. So, but but what I found interesting is that you know you can see you could pose something, light it, position the camera, change your perspective to exactly what you want, and then you've basically got something you can trace over. Do you know what I mean? So even me with my shitty drawing skills right. could, could yeah. conceivably construct something. But I thought it was quite interesting how you know if you were going to model up, uh, you know your your characters, if you were to actually dis- custom make and then rig and and you know make and position your own virtual figures sculpted figures you also have the information to print the figure from a particular panel do you know what i mean so if there was like a a Mm well-known sort of pose that was like the the cover of something you could actually have that very data as a print so you know what i mean and that's that's amazing whereas if it was just pencil lines on a on a piece of paper like all these old comics that I've been looking through, you know, they're, they're all inked, you know, on, on card or whatever, and they would have been, you know, shrunk down and reproduced. They were just right. ink on card. The, the, now there's the whole digital thing. I know this makes me sound really old, but I'm still excited about all this. But just the very notion that you could, do you know what I mean? The information that you, like if you sculpt something digitally, you can extract, because there's a thing in ZBrush, isn't there, where you can turn something into a picture. So it looks like a drawing. It uses the information yeah. of a 3D model and renders a drawing. So you could have five or six different ZBrush is, is amazing. It's incredible. It just changes everything. Yeah. Well, it's what I that's well the way I I did Abby Chase is you you can you can load in um, reference images into you know the the ground planes you know the background or the left side right side and so on mm-hmm. so you can line up so you can get your Z sphere and start pushing and pulling. By changing the the viewport, to, you know the, either the straight on or the or a profile, or you can have if you've got the right imagery, you can have a top view, back view, bottom view, and be able to line up your clay according to those reference images, and get your get your basic form mm. built really really easily. I mean, it's that's the way Landon Meyer models um, his masks for for his hyperflesh uh, stuff you know his his Donald Trump and his uh, Peter Dinklage and his 
Walter White is Brian Cranston is Walter White and, mm-hmm. and all these wonderful masks that that Landon creates. Um, he does it in ZBrush using reference images behind the clay and just pushes and pulls to get the forms and then he goes in and details the shit out of it. Amazing. That's so cool. <laughs> and then print and then pr- and then and then extracts you know then creates a mold and you using masks and extraction and so on and then saves that exports it out and prints it on a Lulzbot Taz though I think he's got a resin printer now that he's doing uh, some work with it has finer resolution than the filament printers do wow that's incredible I just I, I, that's yeah. the thing I think is a lot you got you got to find a thing to do with it that's why that's my thing with ZBrush at the moment is I found these comics and I'm really inspired to try and create some models based on some of these drawings that inspired me 35 years ago do you know what I mean and it, it, yeah. it's like that that having that interest because at the end of the day yes it's a technology but I'm trying to make a cool thing with it and that's what's at the head of it all that's what's pulling you along it's not the software the software is just a thing to get you there it's just a tool so it's really having that real interest in the first place that makes you want to learn it in order to to make the things so you can hold it in your hand and go look at this cool thing <laughs> I've always wanted I would have yeah, killed for this as a kid <laughs> And the basics uh, I'm finding is, as I'm doing these um, tutorials that I'm that I'm finding, start get getting the basics down. Just you know, a handful of tools. You don't have to go into great depth to start gaining a level of proficiency with it. Mm. And then you realize, okay, it's it's not as daunting as as I. Th- first thought I can do this and then you can create scenes you can do hard surfaces as well as organic stuff and you can paint on it and it's jeez it's it's fucking cool as shit <laughs> that's awesome which um tutorials did you did you go did you have a particular guru that you sort of latched onto that really spoke to you and, um, and helped well you out there's or? there are some yeah, as a matter of fact. So I saw um, some flipped normals. Z classroom on the on the on. Yeah, uh, on the Pixel Logic, you know, website. You know, the the Z classroom has got a bunch of classes at at every level. You know, uh, advanced, intermediate, and beginner. Okay. Um, I've been been doing one. You know, sculpt and paint ahead with a uh, with ZBrush Core is a is a terrific series of. Of tutorials. Now, can I just ask? Guy's name who? When you say that, and I heard this before, the, there's there's ZBrush Core, and there's ZBrush, uh, or, or, or um, um, Sculptress. They're not in yeah. ZBrush, are um, they? Are they separate programs? I think ZBrush and ZBrush Core are are the same thing. Okay. I didn't know if ZBrush Scul- Core Sculptress is different. Sculptress is different, but I, but I didn't know when you said. Yeah, Sculptress uh, is different. Okay, so when you said said sculpt sculpt a head and paint a head in ZBrush Core, I didn't know if there was like a setting within the yeah. fully fledged ZBrush that switches off a whole bunch of stuff, so it just functions as Core ZBrush because you pay more for the not full that I can and not that I can find because that would be good, wouldn't yeah, it? No, it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. I think it's well. R- well, right now because of all this, um, you know, sheltering at home crap, um, they've got free trial uh, downloads of of ZBrush. Okay, so probably worth checking. Interested? Out. Go go up and and download it and have at it. And Sculptress has always been free, so that's but that is the gateway drug to ZBrush but it's still a f- and, uh, you know it stands alone on it you know on its own as a free program so it's de- yeah. definitely worth looking at you will need a tablet really you can't really sculpt with a mouse you need to get yourself a tablet but they're not a king's ransom at all the, the basic right. tablets are pretty good no I think yeah nice I think Wacom the, the tablet. Wacom yeah. tablet I've got I've, which I've had for a while I, I think it was maybe a 150 bucks maybe yeah. maybe yeah. that much but you can do drawings and all kinds of stuff with it as well you don't just have to use it with ZBrush yeah, um, yeah, sure. And you can even you can even um, put images down on it and trace and 
so you can get get uh, more usage out of it. Amazing. Sweet. Right. I'm going to wrap this up. I think we, uh, we've waffled on enough. <laughs> now I'm all hungry for ZBrush now. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, i gotta got to get my modeling fix. Okay. All right, dude. Good to speak to you again. Thanks very much. Likewise. All right, man. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. You can get in touch through our Facebook page or email us at stuartandtodd at gmail.com. Check the show notes for more information. If you enjoyed this episode, tell someone else and help us grow by sharing it on social media. Thanks for listening.